All right, everyone, welcome to Addressing Challenges and Planning for the Future with BIM 360. Um, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, um, please be sure you're typing them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel, not in the chat panel. Um, also, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website and YouTube channel within a couple days. Um, you'll be receiving an email with the link when that is available. Um, and before we jump into the webinar, I just want to introduce Microdesk to you all. So Microdesk was founded in 1994 as an Autodesk reseller with a simple mission to assist architecture, engineering, construction owners, and GIS firms with improving workflows and integrating project delivery technologies. 25 years later, and that mission still holds true. Microdesk is a well-established AECO consulting firm with 13 offices in the U.S. and U.K. We have over 230 AECO consultants, solution specialists, and software developers that can help in all sectors, all disciplines, and all stages. One of the hottest topics in the AECO world are globalization, urbanization, and sustainability. Urbanization studies suggest that the U.S. will build 114 cities the size of Boston in the next 30 years. Here at Microdesk, we can help to make sure you're prepared to meet those demands. We use software from industry leaders and combine it with our vision and passion for sustainability to meet the demands of urbanization and globalization. Our team of industry expert consultants are redefining project delivery and asset management. To help support the industry with these demands of urbanization, uh, we partner with world leaders such as Autodesk and IBM to utilize innovative technologies and methodologies to empower sustainable design and overcome local challenges. Our vision is to reduce the environmental impact of urbanization by helping the AECO industry to design, construct, and operate better projects more efficiently by leveraging the full potential of BIM, VDC, and asset management. Um, to help support the industry with these demands of urbanization, we provide full service consulting. This includes building information modeling services, technology management, mentoring and support, application development, and much, much more. So I'm gonna actually hand it off uh, to today's presenter, Chris Vircho. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Justinia. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you great, thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking some time this afternoon to uh, talk about some BIM 360 stuff. Um, go ahead and give you a little bit of background about me. Uh, my name is Chris Vircho. I am the Strategic Business Consulting Manager here at Microdesk. Um, I actually, this is a little outdated. Um, I have about 14, over 14 years of experience in the industry. Um, being an AECO BIM VDC export, um, prior BIM managers, IT uh, develop, uh, IT director and um, VDC manager for in my past life. Um, I am certified, you know, Autodesk instructor, um, certified Revit professional user, so on and so forth. Um, so I do have quite a bit of experience. Uh, today's agenda, um, Justina went through the About Microdesk, um, so, but after that, I really want to chat about the Connected BIM um, term from Microdesk and what that means um, for planning for future projects. Um, and as we go through this whole uh, COVID, working remotely, and um, how do we come out of the back end of this and, you know, prepare for the future with BIM 360. Um, so then I'm going to go over some of the BIM 360 platforms, uh, the different hubs and the different licenses that are offered, um, and then some BIM 360 supported workflows. Uh, and then, you know, why most firms are, you know, pushing for BIM 360 now and um, what that means. And then I'll leave some time for some questions at the end that um, I can definitely answer. But as questions do come up, um, feel free to put them, just like Justina said, put them in the questions um, box and I will definitely get to them as we go through them. Uh, so, but first I do wanna start off with a couple polls. Um, 
so I'm going to launch a couple polls and feel free to um, answer them. The first one is, you know, what is what is your role? Uh, what what are you mostly doing within, you know, which other firm what firm you're um, joining us with today? Seeing a couple answers coming in: um, project managers and principals, designers, engineers, CAD BIM managers. Give it a couple seconds. Excellent. Okay, next one. Uh, I wanted to uh, kind of understand the audience a little bit more and if you are currently using BIM 360 um, in your workflow um, and what does that, and if not, um, I can um, definitely help answer questions at the end if you have additional. Seems like we have quite a few that are currently using BIM 360 right now. It's about a 50-50 split. Excellent. Uh, and then one final one is, do you have any type of cloud solutions or mo mobile tools integrated into your um, current workflow, um, whether it be Office 365, um, you know, for your desktop or for the mobile, um, Panzura Cloud Solutions, uh, Studio, uh, Bluebeam Studio as a cloud solution, anything like that. <clears throat> Excellent. Seems like most, most people have a cloud solution in place right now, about 80% of the audience right now, uh, which is good. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it uh, and start off with Connected BIM. Um, so planning for Connected BIM, you know, as we go through this COVID and through the back end of it, um, Autodesk has pushed, you know, the term BIM, um, well, the term BIM, you know, wasn't pushed by, uh, you know, it wasn't created by Autodesk, but it was heavily pushed by Autodesk back in, um, you know, 2006, 2007, 2008, um, and everyone was, you know, asked, are you using them or are you planning on using them? Um, now what they're trying to ask everyone is, are you planning for connected them? Um, and what that means is, you know, being able to connect all of those internal and external project team members, you know, with all of that real-time project data, you know, and it's not, it gives you access pretty much anywhere in the world um, because Autodesk, hit, they rent out, you know, all of their BIM 360 stuff gets hosted on AWS. Um, so pretty much anywhere you have internet access to, you can have access to your project data in real time, whether it be the Revit models, um, CAD files, PDF files, um, Excel files, so on and so forth. Any type of project files you can upload up there. And then it also gives you that that real time Revit collaboration with all of your disciplines. Um, there's different methods of linking. You can be linking, you know, your Revit models through the cloud um, live, or there's a consumed method and a shared method, which we'll get into a little bit later. And then it's your it's your project center. Um, like I said, you can you can upload any type of file that you want up there, but the BIM 360 viewer is also um, very intuitive on the file types that it has. Um, capabilities with, whether it be RBT or NWD or NWC, PDF, DWG, um, all of those can get viewed up into that, you know, that project center. So it becomes your, you know, your, your all-encompassing project data center. So when you look at, you know, a current BIM workflow, um, the way that most firms work that, you know, aren't utilizing BIM 360, um, their current state is they go through a funnel effect, you know, at each phase. So through from starting at SD all the way through handover at each phase, you're you're funneling the data out and in, you know, between all of your different project team members, whether it be, you know, doing weekly model shares um, and letting the teams know what has been updated in the Revit models um, so that, you know, they send off weekly models to the architect and then the architect sometimes disperses those out into their their consultants that they have 
on staff. And then what they'll do is they'll, you know, you guys all know you do a package and then you get that to your owner for review and make um, design decisions and, you know, advance the project. So when you think about connected BIM and getting into that whole connected BIM workflow, it makes it a more streamlined workflow, being able to go from one stage to the next without having to go through all of those funneling effects of you can just quickly, you know, hit a submit or review button or share a Revit model quickly from all BIM through, you know, directly from BIM 360. And then you can even, you know, invite your project owners or um, your your project clients into your BIM 360 aspect, your environment, and they can be viewing stuff out there without having to um, download a Revit viewer or Navisworks Freedom if they if you're going through pre-construction coordination things like that. Um, they don't necessarily have to have those separate licensing. They can all just gain access to it right through BIM 360. So the platform, uh, the BIM 360 platform is built off of what's called the Autodesk Forge platform. Um, Autodesk Forge is an open source API that allows uh, third party vendors or Autodesk partners like ourselves um, to be able to create integrations into BIM 360. Um, we currently have uh, a couple of BIM 360 integrations, one of them being our bulk uploader that if you're looking to, um, you know, create a bunch of projects all at once and upload a whole bunch of data all at once um, that can all be done through the bulk uploader you know right from a desktop so and there's a bunch of integrations out there that they have listed on their website um, that can you know uh, office 365 and onedrive and box and you know you can attach all of your separate um, drives into bin 360 so you can gain access to those project files in there so that's why it's really nice having it on top of that Forge platform. And then on top of that Forge platform is where all of your project data lives. And then from your project data is where you pull all of those analytics and insights from you know, design all the way through handover and operations. <clears throat> so some of that you know, analytic, analytics and insights that you're able to pull from that project data that comes out there, you know, it's, it's all design decisions, you know, clashing, um, 2D, 3D data, uh, task and defect, if you're doing, you know, punch listing or CA, um, that can all be done through BIM 360 as well too. Uh, your quality forms, um, all the way into, you know, your handover for giving, you know, reports and um, just simply handing over all of your design files to the owner so that they can, you know, be, be able to figure out how to use those in um, the future. So some of the supported workflows um, through BIM 360, um, you start with your major pillars. Um, every, the bottom, everything is built off of Docs. Um, Docs is the main platform that BIM 360 utilizes um, and everything else is built off of Docs. You can see here your three main pillars, your BIM 360 design, BIM 360 coordinate and BIM 360 build is all built off of Docs um, being your three main pillars of BIM 360 design giving you that Revit cloud work sharing functionality, um, the tracking and timeline, and then, you know, assign issues and add markups to, you know, your Revit models that are up in the cloud. Um, your BIM 360 coordinate giving you that, um, you can have access to the classic glue functionality or the next gen coordinate of just uploading, you know, Revit models and having it automatically run your clash detections for you. And then BIM 360 build doing your RFI and more of your CA and project management functionalities. <clears throat> so when we talk about uh, BIM 360 document management, um, the main functionality of BIM 360 document management is the document distribution, the document control, the markup drawings, the versioning controls, um, being able to have those approval workflows and those review workflows up there and giving you mobile access um, within an iPad or an iPhone or an Android um, or have you know having the functionality be to, uh, for editing um, Office 365 documents up in you know directly from BIM 360 with being Word and Excel files. So if you think about how that plays into you know your team collaboration currently and 
um, how you can, you know, come out of the back end of, you know, this whole working remote um, aspect. I'll actually pull up um, BIM 360. Um, this is your BIM 360 document management. And uh, some of the kind of hidden features in here for your team collaboration, um, one of the really easy ones and really nice ones is uh, being able to subscribe to any folder that's up here. Um, so when you're up into BIM 360 document management, um, you can go over to the more options next to any of the folders and you can actually click to subscribe to any of these. Um, as you subscribe to them, you'll get an email notification saying that something has been updated into this folder or uploaded from somebody um, so that you get those real-time notifications for um, any updates and that team collaboration. So that's um, a really, really nice one that, you know, most people don't realize is out there. Um, some of the other ones are, you know, when you think about that, that team collaboration and moving forward with some of that is those, some middle workflows and those review processes that are up here. So when you go into your project admin, if you're a project admin on some of your, um, in, within your firm, you can go into your services up here and go, let's say you go into your document management services and you can create your review approval workflows so that as you're trying to collaborate with some of your team members remotely, um, instead of you know going through the workflow of, okay, I gotta upload some documents to BIM 360 and then maybe I'll open up my Outlook and send an email notification and let them know, um, you can actually create a more optimized and streamlined workflow directly through BIM 360 that if you create a review process, um, there's multiple options for creating review uh, workflows. Uh, you can do a single one step if you need to just the creator or the production staff to send it off to a project manager um, or a project manager sending it off to an owner to make you know decisions or something like that. A two step, if it needs to go through um, you can start it with the designer or the production staff to go to a PM and then to go to the owner uh, to make more informed design decisions. Or it could be, you know, uh, you know, multiple steps of architectural designer sending it to their PM and the PM sending it to the structural engineer for review. Um, and then the structural engineer sending it back to the PM with um, their answers. So you can create a more formal process and the way that that looks is anytime you're in your BIM 360 document management, um, as you upload files or um, Revit models or PDFs or whatever it may be, um, you can come up here and let's say you go, you know, I'll go to a BIM execution plan that we have up here. You can click on it and there is a button up here that says submit for review. Once you hit that submit for review, it's going to ask you which one of those approval workflows you have you've created on your project admin um, that you can uh, select from. And then once you go through, you know, you can see here, we, this is a subcontractor RFI. So this one's a four step process. Um, so it starts with the creator, then goes to the GC, uh, or it goes to the, the foreman on site from the subcontractor for him to review first. And then it, the foreman can hit approve, and then it goes to the GC, and then the GC will submit it to the architect. <clears throat> so it's a more, um, it, and it's all done from up here. Once you hit submit, they'll get an email notification that a document is ready for review and they'll be able to click a link and it'll pull them up into here where that uh, uh, that file is for review. And then they can hit either approve or um, deny or you know approve with comments, things like that. And then it'll move to the next stage if it hits approve. If it's denied, it'll go back to um, the previous stage. So there's a more uh, simplified workflow for doing your team collaboration directly from um, within BIM 360. Um, some of the other aspects that you have now uh, within not only collaborating within your, your BIM 360 team is being able to share uh, files with the public now. Um, this is a, a very recent update that Autodesk made, I want to say a couple of weeks ago, um, that you can create a public link now that you don't necessarily have to have a BIM 360 docs license or a BIM 360 design license 
to be able to collaborate or gain files from BIM 360. Um, and the way that that's done is in your project admin, I think it's under the advanced uh, project admin services, the document management, and then your advanced settings up at the top, there's a slider up here for share documents publicly. Um, if you want your team members internally, um, if you don't want them to have that access, you can just turn that off, this off and then they won't be able to share a public link. Um, otherwise you can turn it on and then that'll give this functionality of when you hit share on a file, like I'll share this PDF, um, and then you can cre create a public link and then enter an email address and then hit send. Um, so I will go ahead and send this to myself and then hit send. Now they'll get an email notification um, and then they'll be able to click on the link that's up there and be able to download the file to view it um, so that they don't necessarily have to have that BIM 360 aspect. This was a very well needed update that Autodesk has made for um, this whole team collaboration, especially nowadays, you know, within, um, you know, COVID and everybody working remotely, um, ha having access to BIM 360 and being able to share those files with, you know, anybody now is, is very critical. Um, so then when you come out of the back end of this, it's just, it's a more simplified workflow. So the email notification, I will pull this up. Um, you'll see here, this is the email notification that they will get. It says you, it, the file has been shared by myself with myself. Um, what the file is, they can reply directly to here and they will send me an email notification as well too. Um, so it's not like it's a one-step process. Um, they can click on the link and it will take them out to um, open up the tab and they can actually, since I have a license, it's probably just going to get me directly into the bin up oh, here. So this is what they'll see. Um, what version has been shared? Um, not really too much data. Um, and then they can simply click download and download the file. So it was a, a very necessary update that Autodesk made. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, there was one question, but. Okay. Um, some of the other uh, team collaboration aspect within BIM 360, um, which is really nice is, uh, and, and especially when you're trying to plan for the future of this, um, is having access to this, you know, just like you would, uh, uh, you know, I have OneDrive up here. Um, there's what's called the desktop connector, which is free download that you can download and gain access to from Autodesk. Um, anybody who has a BIM 360 license, whether it be docs or design, um, you can install a, this desktop connector. Um, so you can gain access to your files directly through your desktop that any projects that you're assigned to. Um, <clears throat> so I'll open up our microdesk one and the project that I'm assigned that I have access to right here. So when I go into my project files right here, you'll notice that this folder structure right here matches my folder structure up here. Um, and if I were to even make updates to this, it's going to, um, you know, delete the folder out of here. And then if I refresh up here, that test folder down at the bottom should be gone. Yep. So you don't necessarily have to be working directly into, you know, BIM 360 and that's where it comes very handy within this team collaboration in this remote environment that everybody's in right now um, is that it, it's just like it's another uh, network drive on your PC that if you were even working you know, internally in your office, um, you have those network drives that are attached to your PC. This way it treats it as almost like a network drive that you can gain access to those project files up there. And the folder structure, it can be customized to you know, whatever standard your company is used to for looking at project files. Um, this is just a kind of like a hodgepodge of uh, folder structure that we kind of gave the subcontractor a little bit too much freedom to create whatever they wanted. Um, but you can see even the DWG exports that um, you can see here when I look at my DWG files that BIM 360 is not necessarily just for the Revit live cloud functionality that even if you have DWG files, and let's say some of those are linked into your Revit models, you can actually pass them through um, your desktop connector here so that um, 
if you're working in Revit right now and you're working remotely, um, sometimes there are users that they download those DWG files into their C drive and link them to their C drive, and then every user has to do that same thing. Um, this way, you can just save it to BIM360 and pass it through the desktop connector and actually link it there. That way, that link stays updated for all of the users that are within Revit. Um, and you can also work directly in these AutoCAD files um, so that what you can do is you can open it up and then you can file lock it so that um, it treats it as, you know, just like you're working um, in your office that if it's, if I open it up and lock it down for myself, then anybody else that goes to open it up after that will open up a read-only file. Um, and then I can continue to work and make my uh, DWG edits and then save it, close it, and then unlock it for everybody. And then those links will be updated in Revit. So the desktop connector has uh, quite a few more options. Um, it's also nice that if you're uh, working remotely and your team, you have a TXT file for let's say keynotes or an Excel file that gets linked into Revit, um, those can all be passed through your desktop connector too so that all of your remote employees don't necessarily have to have a copy of that on their C drive. They can all just pass it through the desktop connector on BIM 360. So your, your team collaboration, you know, extends beyond BIM 360 and in through the desktop connector to, to make it treat like a local area network, but as you're working remotely these days, um, which it's, it's been a lifesaver for us, especially here at Microdesk, the projects that we work on. <clears throat> okay. Um, one final thing for team collaboration within Docs is being able to do a little bit more formal transmittal process. Um, instead of doing a review process, you can see the reviews that are up here when you submit those files for review. Um, you can track those reviews up here and who has done what, um, but the same way as you know within a transmittal process as well too. Um, so within your BIM 360 folder structure, you can go into any of your project documents that are up here and you can, you know, uh, do a more, create a transmittal for sharing these files out. Um, so that as all of your users are remote, you want to kind of track, you know, what they, did they view the file? Did they download the file? Um, what did they do with the file after I sent it to them type of scenario? Um, you can create that transmittal and send it to, you know, internal, external team members. Um, they have to be attached to BIM360 in the project or have to have at least a BIM360 docs license that they can gain access to this. You can also send it off to entire roles um, that if you have roles set up in your project administration, um, whether it be designers, architects, project managers, GC, you can set up all those different roles and send it to the specific roles or you can send it to an entire company. Um, so whether it be your internal company or an external company, um, whoever you need to get those notifications to. And then you can um, save that and then send those transmittals out as a more formal process. And when those transmittal gets created, it gets tracked underneath this transmittal tab up at the top here. Um, so that when you click on those, you can see the full data of who's done what. Um, so this transmittal was sent and it was received by Patricia here. Um, but you can you can see up here that she didn't actually view it. She didn't download it. There was nothing that she did with this file after that. Um, so I may question, you know, what type of collaboration did we have on this uh, file? So those are some of the, the key functionality um, within, you know, your team collaboration, you know, working remotely now and, um, you know, planning for the future within document management itself. Um, getting back into um, the power presentation here. Uh, the next one is the design collaboration. When you talk about the design collaboration, um, we're talking about the Revit functionality within um, BIM 360. Having those live uh, cloud models up in BIM 360 and being able to gain access to those Revit models without having to VPN into the office, it makes that team collaboration, especially working remotely, um, if you're working remotely and you're working through VPN and you have a decent sized model, you understand the struggle of um, sync times and regeneration times and just lags that you see within Revit as you're working. Um, having that team collaboration through BEM360 right now, um, it 
makes it a lot more streamlined and you see a lot less errors, you see a lot less lag. Um, and it, it, it tends to be really nice as you see those Revit models, they feel like they're, um, they're on your PC, on your C drive as you're working within these. <clears throat> So, and then being able to, you know, review markups and issues, you know, sending those off to your PMs and having them, um, you know, markup files directly, you know, in BIM 360 and send them back to the team members um, so that it's all done right there within BIM 360. Change your visual visualizations within BIM 360 as well. Um, and then publish those documents that, that you don't necessarily have to have, you know, if you're, if you're trying to go through this, um, middle process that you're going to submit you know the designers or the production staff submits their their pdfs for review they don't necessarily have to pdf from revit upload a pdf um, you can actually do a published document sets from within revit um, and then you can also automate that that task within vim 360. Um, so if you um, i will open up my revit here and go into my design collaboration hub and you'll see here when you have those revit models up and you create those teams up here you can see these are all the teams that we have added to this project um, and you can view those revit models here um, as well as within the document set so if i go into um, you know i'm a project manager and i'm trying to collaborate with my team and i'm i don't want to wait for them to create those pdfs and send them off to me um, you know that can be done through the publish sets within Revit so that you can see those 2D sheet views within here. It just has to be set up prior to um, publishing within Revit um, so that you can see these uh, documents up here. And then once these, these uh, sheets are up here, um, your project managers, your owners, your other production staff, how you're collaborating within your team uh, becomes a little bit more streamlined because you can gain access to you know, marking up stuff within here, but you also have a little bit more freedom within the viewer instead of viewing just PDF views. Um, what's really cool about this is being able to open up the split view mode. And then if I'm on the PDF, um, let's say you're trying to click around and you're clicking on some of the, you know, right here, I'm showing some conduits and it will um, kind of navigate down into 3D view so that I can see them both at the same time versus working strictly just in PDF. You're working directly in 2D. Um, this way, you know, the PMs and other team members can be viewing stuff and see kind of what's going on a little bit better, you know, around these in 3D view. Otherwise, you can go back into um, your sheet view here and you can also um, click on elements and view some of the properties. Um, so it's that's another nice function is that um, you know, if you're PDFing these to Revit and submitting them for, you know, internal design review, um, you're not getting some of that, that smart data. So when you're publishing directly from Revit, um, you're getting a little bit more data onto it. So it still looks like the PDF, um, but your users can also click on some of this, this data in here and view some of the properties of this, let's say this panel right here. Um, so I can actually see the Revit properties that are coming from this panel. What level is it actually attached to? Um, some of the, you know, here's, it's a 208 um, volt panel. It's a two phase, all the properties, um, whether they be um, mostly instances, some types that pull over from, from Revit within here. And then they can also do like a simple, uh, if you're, some of your users are used to the camera function within Revit, um, you can actually use this place me function within the sheet view here itself. and they can say, okay, I want to view this a little bit um, better so that I can see what's going on, you know, without having to, you know, open up Reddit and find this area and see what's going on a little bit more so I can see the panels and the conduits that are coming off of here and how this all interacts in the 3D space and into this um, area. So and this all depends on, you know, what's linked into this model and what's set up into the default 3D view. The default 3D view that I have here set up when I place me that it's just showing me all the electrical information into this model um, that all can get set up within Revit itself. So the way that you do that is, you know, when you're in Revit and you're opening a project, um, I'm opening specifically, you know, a cloud model that I have here. Um, when you're in Revit, 
you want to go under your collaborate tab when you have a project open and you want to go to your publish settings and this is where you dictate you know, what sheets get published and what views get published up into BIM 360 as these models are up there. Um, so you definitely want to set up your published settings so that your team collaboration within your PMs and additional project staff, um, production staff, or your consultants, your structural engineers and your MEP engineers, things like that. Um, what are they, what can they see out there without having to specifically download the model or um, sending them a PDF set? Um, so you come up here and you define a set and then you can say, okay, I want to go all sheets in the model. Um, you can see I have no sheets in this model right now, um, but you can check the boxes of all the sheets that are up there that once you go through and publish this, um, it will publish those sheets up there as well too. So you don't necessarily have to PDF. <clears throat> and then when you're in BIM 360, um, you can also go up into your design collaboration, all of your teams up here, um, that when you look at, you can see here, um, I'm on the structural team uh, or the architectural team right now, and I have an automatic publish that it automatically publishes these models every Monday at um, 5 a.m. so that any PM or production staff, they come in Monday morning, they'll make sure that they get the latest information. Um, or my consultants, you know, my structural engineering consultants, my MEP consultants, interior design, things like that. Um, I want to make sure that they see the, um, the most up-to-date every Monday morning. Um, so you can set that here or you can also set it up into in your project administration as well too. Um, when you go into your project admin, go under services and your design collaboration right here, and then you can click on any of the teams that you have set up here and then set up a scheduled publish. So you, right now they're doing it on a weekly basis. Um, I'm hoping they make some updates. You know, right now there's a drop down that you can change this and I'm hoping that's in a future update that you can do this on a daily basis. Um, but right now it's on a weekly basis. You pick a day and this is where I did, you know, every Monday morning at 5 a.m. Um, before people start getting into the office, they can you know, see this data. And then you hit that slider and then hit close and you can see it was scheduled here. So now the kitchen designer will get a schedule published automatically every Monday at 5 a.m. <clears throat> okay. So some of the other um, team collaboration functions within Revit, it, when you're working in BIM 360 design, um, everybody being remotely right now, it makes it a lot harder that um, if you're working in a Revit model and somebody owns something and they may have stepped away from their computer, you can't get a hold of them because you need to gain access to something. Um, you have some additional functionalities within managed cloud models that you can actually force a relinquish from specific users that may own elements in here. Um, all you have to do is go into your managed cloud models under collaborate, go into your specific project that you're working on. And then once you go into that specific project, it's going to list all of the active Revit models that are initiated in the cloud. And once this pops up, um, it will, show you some additional features that you have within here. So you can see here, I've got my architectural design model. I can go to more actions and then I can click relinquish up over here. Um, right now it's gonna tell me none of the team members currently own any model elements, so I don't need to. Um, but if you do hit that function and other team members do own something that you need to gain access to, you can select their username and hit force relinquish um, and it will force their relinquish um, just be careful that it's something that they're not actively working on. Um, if it's something that they're actively working on, you, um, it will tell you that you can't relinquish it because they're actively working on it and they haven't synchronized back um, yet. So there are some, you know, additional functionalities being able, you know, being remotely now that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to send an email to those remote users and say, hey, can they relinquish? Um, you can actually force that relinquish right, right directly from here. Um, there's also some other additional functionalities that you can view the versions up here so you can see who has saved what. Um, let's go into one that has a little bit more data to it. Um, so every time as your users are working remotely, 
um, every time they hit synchronize, it creates a snapshot of that model and back, backs it up in the cloud automatically for you. Um, so you can see here we have um, almost 350 synchronizes you know, in this project um, over, I think it was a span of um, four or five months that we did in, in this project here. Um, so, and I can actually, you know, roll some of those back. I can restore it so that if a user working remotely, um, they messed something up or they synchronized when they shouldn't have, um, you can go up in here and restore some of those functionality. So those are some uh, quick tips, you know, working remotely within Revit in the design collaboration uh, portion get into the next slide here. Um, BIM 360 coordinate, uh, being able to uh, coordinate all your models um, live in the next gen aspect, you know, pretty quickly up within Revit ha without having to um, do an append in Navisworks and Navisworks manage in Navisworks um, or in glue um, so that you don't have to append the files. You can upload all of your Revit models into the plans portion in BIM 360 document management. Um, and it will run a, an automatic clash detection on any Revit models that get posted up there. And now it will even do DWG and IFT files. Um, so, and then when you get all of those Revit models up there, um, you'll notice that if I go back to the beginning here, you can see when you're in um, document management, it shows those Revit models and then you get into the coordinate, it'll show you all the Revit models that it's clashing with each other. Um, and then you go over to the clashes tab and it will show you in a grid view of how many clashes are within um, each of the Revit models. And then you click on those specific Revit models and it automatically groups your clashes. It creates those save viewpoints automatically for you. Um, and you can do your issue. Um, you can issue those clashes, you know, to specific people. So it's a little bit more automated process and streamlined for, um, I like to say the, the design aspect of um, Revit, usually your designers, they don't want to spend the time of appending and creating all of these NWF files and getting it all prepared and set up. Um, that's usually, you know, pushed onto the GC because they, you know, they want to control their tolerances a little bit more, or they want to have a little bit more functionality within Navisworks. Um, some of the design team members um, don't have to take it to that step anymore. They can just run it quickly within um, Clash so that as you're working, you know, remotely these days um, and, you know, within all of your team members from architectural MEP structure, having that one click option of viewing those clashes up here, you know, pretty quickly um, is very useful when you guys are trying to coordinate with each other and collaborate um, working remotely. Um, then getting into the um, BIM 360 build aspect of BIM 360, um, working remotely, um, you have, they added a functionality for meeting minutes um, so that you can create agendas, track attendance, um, do document decisions, assign individuals to action items. Um, you can generate follow-up meetings and then you can also export those um, meeting minutes into PDF format and send them off to the entire team as a follow-up. Um, so BIM 360 design or build, um, having that meeting minute functionality now so that as you're having all of these remote meetings and um, trying to keep track of all of this data in one place, um, having that, you know, up in BIM 360 is a lot easier um, so that you can have all of this functionality when you're doing a lot of these um, remote meetings. Um, and then when you get into uh, more of your CA construction administration and um, some of your GCs within build, it gives you that RFI and submittal tracking um, that you can, you're able to create um, RFIs up in BIM 360 um, and then submit them as a, um, you can see here, a more formal process, um, add attachments um, and then submit them off to specific team members and then you can track that up here. Um, and then you can also attach that to spec sections. So you actually have your spec sections built up into BIM 360. Um, 
and then you can attach those PDFs and, uh, it's from your spec sections up into those spec sections up in Ben360. And then as your, you get your shop drawings from your subcontractors um, or your install drawings, whether it be you know, your casework or your steel supplier, whoever it may be, they can submit those packages up into BIM 360. And then you can actually attach those to certain spec sections, excuse me, um, so that it's a more kind of global process to track all of that construction administration stuff. Um, doing your constructability reviews up into BIM 360, um, having that design review functionality within, you know, the BIM 360 viewer um, is definitely nice. Being able to compare those versions um, within BIM 360 docs, that's, that's another huge functionality right now working remotely. Um, being, having all of those team members, you don't necessarily know what any team member is working on um, remotely. So you can be you can compare those different versions um, so that every time you know a different published version is out there, you can see how the Revit model has progressed, um, not only internally but as well as externally, so that if your MEP designers and your structural designers they're all working in Ben360 as well, you can see some of the updates that they have made into their model. Um, so that if you have those linked into yours and it reflects, you know, some of the specific views within your model, um, you can kind of see how that's going to affect your model before, you know, the link um, gets updated within yours. Um, and then having, you know, being able to 2D and 3D markup within um, the BIM360 viewer itself. Um, cost management, uh, this is more for the those GCs out there that if you're utilizing BIM360 build, you can add on your cost management functionality within BIM360 build. Um, and it gives you access to um, control all of your contract documents, um, your flexible budget uh, structures, do your change order workflows within, you know, BIM 360 cost management. Um, and there is integrations into um, some of those additional um, financial software that most GCs already have. So you can actually integrate into some of those that are currently out there. <clears throat> quality management. Um, I like to do it more, more, more for punch listing in the construction and administration side um, for those architects and engineers out there that, you know, don't necessarily have a punch listing workflow. Um, you can do it within BIM360 itself and you can create it, you know, as uh, let's say issue tracking. Um, you can utilize the issue tracking as your punch listing um, all within BIM 360 and you can customize it from the project administration center um, in your project admin, as I get back into BIM 360 here, if you go to your project admin and go to um, your services and then your document management tab along the left and you go under, oh, no, nope, sorry. Um, it's under issues right here. You can go to types and by default, there is a punch listing op option in here, but you can customize those subtypes in here um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be punch listing. It can be quality safety, um, even coordination and clash, de um, clash detection, you know, as you're coming through this whole design process um, and coordinating with all of these remote users, um, having that issue functionality within um, BIM 360 document management. So, and that can be done within any view itself, um, even in NWD. Um, so as you, if you're running an NWD process with your GC um, for Navisworks clash detection, you can create issues even directly in your NWD file and attach it to, let's say, you know, some of these group openings up here. And then you give it, you know, those, what, what type is it? Is it the punch listing or was it a clash or coordination issue? Um, and then actually assign it to a user um, internal, externally, you know, as we're working remotely these days, it, it becomes, you know, a little bit easier to track some of these. And then if you create these issues, um, you'll be able to track them up into BIM 360 to see, um, did they respond to it? Did they make the update? Is it closed? Is it done? Things like that without having to track these in an email now. <clears throat> okay. Um, skip over some of these, some of the data and analytics that are up there, um, you get 
to, um, there's a project dashboard that you can see a lot of this insight for some of those issues and the RFIs and um, partner cards or tasks or um, you, these are all customizable on the project management uh, on the project dashboard, the insight tab. Um, you can customize any of these cards to see it more on a numerical data standpo uh, standpoint or graphical data. Um, there are all, of, all of these cards can be customized and even some of the integrations that you have out there um, have their own custom cards that you can see them on the insight tab itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why, you know, why are people, uh, what entitlement is needed for BIM meeting minutes? That is BIM 360 build. Good question, Joshua. Uh, why BIM 360? You know, why are firms pushing into BIM 360? Not only, you know, is it because of this whole COVID um, situation, it's making it easier for teams to work remotely. Um, it's keeping them connected. It's secure. Um, so having it on AWS, all of this follows the security protocols of um, AWS. It's, you know, integrated and it's very data driven, um, being able to pull all of that data and analytics out of it, you know, from one spot. Um, so that connected aspect, having access, you know, from mobile, um, giving you that, that team collaboration from anywhere that you are, um, not just in the office anymore and not, um, you don't have to VPN back into the office to gain access to those project files or go into the office, download files onto your laptop and then take them off into, you know, your, your go to when you're going home or going to a project site or going to a client site, things like that. You have access to all of those right there. The secure, the security protocols that it follows on AWS. Um, having those, uh, those SOC to the SOC 2 compliance, um, ISO compliance, um, there are many other certifications that BIM 360 follows so that if you're looking for a specific certificate um, that you're trying to meet, um, let's say government um, security protocols or um, international, it doesn't matter, we can just let us know, we can reach out to Autodesk and make sure that we get the proper security certificates for you guys um, so that you can um, present those security certificates to your owner, your client, whoever it may be that's requiring those. Um, and then the permission controls, you're, you're literally giving each user or company um, specific permission controls within BIM 360 document management so that they can see um, specific files or folders or um, being able to upload, you know, you're giving them upload, download, edit, viewable access. Um, so you're controlling who can see or do what within BIM 360. And then that data driven, um, the prediction and analytics, and then um, it's, it's giving that global snapshot of that project information for those owners or those PMs um, so that they can make those more improved decisions um, just by looking at the, the Insight dashboard within BIM 360. Um, and then just like I said um, before, the, the integrations that are out there being on that, that Forge platform, um, it opens it up for all of these third-party um, vendors to be able to create their own integrations um, into BIM 360. So these are some of the examples that are up there. There is a full list of BIM 360 that um, on their uh, web page, um, integrations.bim360.autodesk.com, you can see it at the bottom here. Um, there's a full list out there that gets updated on a monthly basis. Now BIM 360, um, since it's come out, that, that integrations list has grown you know, tenfold. Um, since its first month and it only continues to grow every day. <clears throat> so I'll take this time to open it up to some questions. Um, if you have any questions and you don't um, feel like talking about it now, um, you can reach out to us and you know, we'll answer them um, on a call. If it's you know, more private questions or feel free to put your questions in the questions dialog box. Um, just seeing you, I don't know if we can unmute people that if they want to vocally express their questions. Yeah, we could do that as well. Um, let me see. I guess um, one second. Um, I 
Okay, I can unmute everyone if they're comfortable with that, but I would have to unmute, unmute like everyone at the same time. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. Yeah, so we'll go ahead um, and we'll unmute people. Okay, so folks, we're gonna unmute you um, and then you can ask questions if you'd like. Or feel free to type them. Okay. Yeah, you can. So now you will all have the ability to unmute yourselves. So we've got a question in the questions tab. Are there features not present, accessible from the mobile platform, iPad and iPhone? Um, great question. That uh, the way that BIM Autodesk actually built BIM 360, even on the um, the desktop application, you notice that if I'm in document management, I go to my folders and I'm within a viewer on my desktop. Um, the way that they built this is that it's it's fully integrated and accessible, no matter what platform you're using, whether you're on the desktop, iPad, iPhone, Android. The user interface looks exactly the same. That's why you see some of these buttons are pretty big over here. Um, so that if you're using your finger on an iPad, um, it becomes easy access. Um, but you have all of the same functionality that you do on the iPad or iPhone version that you do on um, the desktop. I prefer when I'm out in the field, I utilize my iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. Um, it makes the, the freehand markup tool pretty intuitive. Hi, this is Paul. Um, when we've been downloading source files, um, it's put, the source file is pulling all the linked files as well, which mm -hmm. is obviously a little bit frustrating in the sense that you know, we're, 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 if we make if we make models available to clients, um, then essentially they can be pulling down gigabytes of information. We'd rather that they only pull down the um, the source model rather than all the associated linked models as well. Is there any yeah. is there any resolution to that? Has that been resolved? No, it has not been resolved to date. Um, I know that's been a concern. That's been a concern of mine too, as just like you have, as I create a public link, and I don't necessarily want them to have access to specific stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's it's been a problem, and I'm I'm hoping that's on their roadmap for Q2 um, on their next update round because they just opened up that public link one. Um, a couple weeks ago, and I'm hoping that they kind of fine tune that down so you can say, okay, are all source files being attached or not? Um, but currently, there is no option for that. Okay. Good question, Paul. Sorry, I know it wasn't the answer you're looking for. <laughs> no, it's it's really just a bit. I mean, we've been trying and trying, and and, and we we reached out to our own vendor, and um, we just couldn't get a resolution to it at all. You know, we thought it was actually just you know the difference between the, the linking methodology. You know, but it, it, we tried everything with every which way, but listen, couldn't resolve it. But it, it would be, I think, it would be um, a significant. Um, um development in the software if they could do that because it's one of the most common comments that have come back to us you know and and and, and the um and 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 you know as you say you know if you've got a cd level project a cda level project you know there's 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 but we're talking we can be talking about five or ten gigs of data you know it's pretty frustrating yep yep yeah yeah it, it's it's been frustrating for me i i was attached to a project that you know I had 15 Revit models loaded all into one and they're downloading, you know, I think it was 80 gigs of data at one point and yeah, it was, it was a mess. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it's, it's a fix. Um, I had some, you know, some of my own workarounds to it, you know, but it was a lot of manual process at that point. There's no quick, easy button that we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. I'm, you know, I'm here to answer whatever you guys have. Um, I try to, you know, there's a lot within BIM 360 itself, um, whether it be docs or design, coordinate build, um, try to cram as much in into an hour as I can. Um, so if there's something that I didn't cover that you want me to answer, feel free.
Okay. Um, well, like I said before, um, here, I mean, if you do have additional questions, you can contact us um, that maybe after today, um, they, it may not have popped up, um, but as you're playing with BEM360, um, I would highly suggest now that Autodesk has opened up their free trials, um, they're literally just giving away docs and design for free through this whole pandemic situation. If you're not utilizing it and you're working remotely, I would highly suggest you um, try to um, at least optimize it in this working remotely option um, because it's going to be a lot faster and a lot more streamlined, um, especially working through Revit within design. Um, so not having to pay for that, you know, as you're going through this. Um, and if you need help, you know, if you have questions in setting that up, um, if you have any additional questions on Venture 60 itself, um, you can go to our website, micronet.com. You can give us a call. Um, or we do have an email address you can email directly, sales support at microdesk.com. Um, that'll come to our sales support team and they'll reach out to myself or one of our other um, BIM360 specialists that can definitely point you in the right direction or um, get you going on, you know, whatever issues you guys may have. This has been great. Thank you very much. It was very helpful. No, no. Thank you for joining, Paul. I no appreciate problem. it. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, have a good Thursday and have a good weekend. Thank you everyone. Take care.